Reimagining Success, episode 206. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to the latest Escape in the 9 to 5 interview and I'm here with somebody whose story is very familiar to me and I'm sure familiar to many of you as well. So looking forward to digging into her transition and what she's building for herself now outside of the 9 to 5. So I'm here with Jo Jackson. Welcome Jo. Hi Anna, great to be here. Thanks so much for welcoming me to your podcast today. Thank you. Thank you in advance for your time and uh, and your openness and, and sharing your story. It's so valuable for, for people and I always selfishly really enjoy these myself as well. So I'm really grateful to you. So why don't you <laughs> tell us already, what were you doing before and what are you doing now? Yeah, of course, no problem at all. So um, yeah, I started my career, I suppose, spent the last 15 years of my career very much in the corporate world. So Mm -hmm. focusing in on the commercial side of all things corporate. So working for big brands, um, the likes of Mars, the likes of Johnson & Johnson, most recently as well in Boots um, and Kraft Foods, really uh, launching, delivering great commercial plans, working with some of the biggest retailers in the UK to deliver those commercial kind of propositions. So um, very much in that uh, relationship management, building great um, great deliveries, great activations in store, those sorts of things. And I worked up through the ranks into the sort of commercial director type role. So leading teams, um, you know, landing big negotiations, really very much in that space of owning great relationships with customers in a way that delivers sort of mutual value. So as I say, sort of started my career way back when, sort of 15 years ago um, as a graduate, went through the different program, learned so much as I was going through my career. And then most recently was digital director at Mars. Um, And then, yeah, what I'm doing now. So as of uh, August of last year, I pivoted my career. So I left the big world of corporate and I've taken the opportunity to um, restart or set up my own business, uh, Pivotal Moments, as an executive coach. So there are two elements of my business. One is my executive coaching, my one-to-one executive coaching. And then I also do some associate work where I um, support an organization to facilitate sales and negotiation training, which is obviously very much based on my personal experience and um, you know, using my wheelhouse, if you like, in terms of what I've learned over the years and uh, supporting other people to, to deliver great results for themselves. So a bit of a change, but actually, um, yeah, really looking forward to sort of sharing with you a little bit about the reasons why that happened and, and how it's going. Mm. And with a business name like that, Pivotal Moments, you have to tell us what was the pivotal moment for you? Yeah, absolutely. So Pivotal Moments, the name of my business actually came about because they, those were the words that I was using when I was going through my own Pivotal Moment. So it's really interesting. I hadn't realised they were the words I was using until I spoke to my coach and she was like, hold on a second, Joe." do you realize this? I was like, oh my God, that's my business name. Thank you. That's perfect. So um, it was one of those massive aha moments. I was like, okay, brilliant. Let's go with that. Um, So my pivotal moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose there are two things that kind of came together, probably late 2019, early 2020. And um, it was very much a space of my professional and personal lives, really sort of Everything happened at the same time, and uh, and I really wanted to sort of change things up. So, from a sort of professional life point of view, as I mentioned, I climbed the ladder through various big multinational organisations, worked with some amazing businesses, some amazing people, and um, you know, I'd, I'd really got to a place that I probably never thought I was going to get to. So I was really proud of kind of the progression that I delivered, um, and you know, the success that I'd achieved. But I kind of started looking at okay, well, what's next? You know, from if I was to want to progress further, I might have had to, for example, relocate. Actually, I'm a real home bird. So I really wanted to make sure that I was staying in the local area with my family and friends, didn't want to be moving to, you know, Zurich or wherever it might have been. Um, But also I was thinking, actually, do you know what? I don't sense that that, those bigger roles, those, you know, big, heavy hitting sort of C-suite type roles would give me the same level of mojo that I was getting previously in my more junior career. 
And I was kind of looking up, you know, at these next potential roles thinking, ah, oh, there's something about that that doesn't sit right. You know, am I okay with maybe either relocating or being away from home loads? Am I okay with the extra pressure with, you know, the extra anxiety maybe that would come with those sorts of roles? And I was thinking, actually, something doesn't really fit as far as that goes. Um, and then the other thing that was going on professionally was also there were a lot of changes, sort of structural changes going on in the business. So where I'd always been, and I don't like even saying this, it feels really um, uncomfortable, but where I'd always been classed as a high achiever, you know, classed as top talent in the organisation, actually my trajectory was slowing. So where I'd gone really fast out the blocks, coming, you know, graduate scheme all the way through, classes, top talent all the way through, you know, 15, 12, well, 12, 13 years in, naturally, your progression slows. So actually, that started to become a little bit of an uncomfortable place for me, because one of my biggest values is around achievement. Mm. And I didn't feel like I was achieving as much because I didn't have the sort of the visibility of those achievements as much as I had in my more junior career. So that started to knock my confidence a little bit. Um, They also say as you become a leader, it becomes more more lonely and that makes you feel more vulnerable. And I definitely felt that is where you go from having, you know, a peer group of people who are very like-minded, you can share ideas, you can have those little rants, moans, you know, coffee, coffee, uh, coffee machine chats to share your thoughts and feelings. Actually, those become fewer and further between because, you're leading teams now, you know, you're, you're demonstrating what's expected. You, um, you know, you have to hold some confidences and those sorts of things. So actually I felt like I'd lost a sense of me in that because mm. I didn't have that sense of kind of team, uh, teamwork and community around me as much. Um, and then there were some restructures, there were some changes, you know, business became even more difficult. You know, there's some big challenges out there in the um, FMCG, the fast moving consumer goods marketplace. And it was all feeling quite, challenging you know I wasn't getting those same results I didn't feel as I was getting those same results as I had previously and the impact of that was it really not my confidence so where you know that progression wasn't coming through as quickly maybe where those results weren't coming through as, as easily where maybe the, the that kind of element of loneliness if you like or vulnerability in those more senior positions coming through it really started to impact on my self-belief and my confidence so actually then started becoming a bit of a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy, if you like. You know, lacking in confidence means you don't feel as though you can make great decisions. So then you start prevaricating a little bit and you start second guessing yourself and all those sorts of things. So it kind of becomes a little bit of a downward spiral. And I just really felt as though I'd lost my mojo in that in that space. Teamed with my sort of personal dynamics that were going on. So I got married in 2018 and unfortunately just before lockdown, my husband said he wanted to leave and we we got we were getting divorced. And I think that in conjunction with lockdown and, you know, all things COVID as we've all had to sort of survive through, made me really reassess life in general. You know, I had... On paper, previously, on paper, I had every trapping of success. I had the great career, I was married, I had a beautiful home, had a brilliant social life and all those sorts of things. And then all of a sudden, everything felt like it was stripped away. Mm -hmm. Some of it out of my own choice, some of it done to me. But in the context of the global pandemic, where actually we all had a lot more time to think about ourselves, our lives, what was going on and so on. And so really, for me, that became my pivotal moment. It was very much, you know, I'm at rock bottom from a professional point of view, which is something that's always been really important to me. I've lost my major. I've lost my confidence. Mm. I'm really not sure where this is going. And from a personal point of view, everything that I've held dear has all of a sudden, the foundations have been wobbled. And so it was like, okay, come on, Joanna, what are you going to do about this? And it was at that point in time, I was like, I need to work with a coach. I need to understand what's important to me. I need to get to know me again. And then I can start building a plan moving forwards. Basically, that's exactly what I did. Mm. So it sounds like both internal and external forces, as you said, both personal and professional. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because that idea of kind of looking up the ladder ahead of you to see, actually, I don't want to progress into those roles. That's really interesting because that's when, when it's really important moment as you did to begin to look elsewhere like actually I'm working really hard but for what do I want to get to that next rung actually not and as you know I and hopefully as as you the listeners know as well I talk about the five pillars of building a life outside the nine to five the first one I'm already hearing you say is defining what success means to you so yeah shared a little bit but how do you feel that your definition has 
evolved. So you were working mm-hmm. towards these, as you said, traditional trappings of success. Was that an intentional choice, do you think? Or was that more just kind of subconsciously, you were just kind of on the conveyor belt of, of doing what we're supposed to be doing? In society? Yeah, this is a really interesting point. So success is something that I work with a lot of my clients on, actually, in the one-to-one coaching space. And I, from a personal point of view, I definitely was on the conveyor belt, as you mm. described it. That's a really nice wording. You know, I think a lot of our sort of generation, so I'm mid-30s, I think a lot of our generation have been very much um, encouraged to think, okay, A-levels, degree, graduate job, progressing up the career ladder, when are you going to get manager in your title, when are you going to get director in your title, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And it almost feels as if there's this sort of consistent focus on what's next, you know, constantly looking forwards, almost not accepting that what you've got now is good enough, always looking for that next thing, really thinking about ambition being, you know, so important. Don't get me wrong, I'm a hugely ambitious person, but sometimes you also have to accept that what you've got now is really good, you know, acknowledge what you've got at the moment. Um, And I think, yeah, I absolutely used to define success by my job title, by where I sat in the hierarchy, by my salary, by the holidays I could go on, which was funded by my salary Mm -hmm. and so on. Those more sort of traditional, almost external Mm -hmm. markings of success, almost those things that someone could look at you and be like, okay, here's the tick box of five things. Yeah, tick, these are the, the sort of the epitome of success. I think, however, when I was working with my coach and when I went through this pivotal moment in my life, I started to realise that actually I can define success in a completely different way. And it might mean that I still get to a great income. It might mean that I still live in a beautiful home. It might mean that I still have great holidays. But actually, I'm not doing it for those reasons. What I'm doing it is uh, the the reasons I'm defining my success in a different way is because actually if I can do it in a way that means gives me sense of passion, sense of purpose, sense of comfort, but also a sense of ambition and pride, then those other things will follow. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So it's not about trying to chase the dream of the house, the car, the salary, the, the hierarchy level. It's more about, okay, am I doing something that's purposeful? Am I doing something that's worthwhile? Am I doing something that I'm passionate about? Am I doing something where I'm having an impact? Am I doing something where my work-life balance works for me? Mm. Am I doing something where I feel free because I'm in control of my own time? Am I doing something where I'm meeting more people, where I'm consistently learning? All of a sudden, I started realizing that almost the input metrics of what success means to me were very different. The output metrics might be similar, Mm -hmm. but actually the input metrics were quite different. And actually, I used to say, you know, I don't want to sell my soul anymore. Mm. And I really felt like that. And it's interesting because some of my clients use versions of those words with me. I think we we can get stuck in the conveyor belt of life. And we think the only way to achieve those, those ambitions, those sort of external validations of success is to follow this particular model. But actually, I've realized and I'm learning, I'm still learning that that's not the case. But actually, if you go in with it with the right input metrics of what's my passion, what's my purpose, what impact do I want to have? How do I want to manage my life with a life balance that works for me? Then that's a much more um, deep and meaningful version of success, in my view. Mm-mm. It's so interesting because, as you say, in a way, it's quite subtle and it's internal. So maybe the outward bound metrics are the same, and other people can't even tell that you made the shift. But it's so foundational. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've come across Danielle Laporte's "Core Desired Feelings," because what I'm hearing you say is a lot of that. So she talks about instead of having what she would say is quite masculine energy goals of "I want yeah. to have a big house and I want to have this job" and so on. It's about well, no, I want to feel grounded I want to feel Mm. secure or I want to feel free I want to feel alive and these feelings might be achieved through some of those external things like having a house but a house for example can be wow I feel grounded and I feel like I'm belonging and so on but it can also be I feel trapped and so on because suddenly I'm in this mortgage and I can't you know and so on so the feeling I heard you say was really important another piece was your values so it's, of course, something we do a lot in coaching, get clear on our yeah. values. You mentioned that achieving was one of your values. Would you say that's still one of your values or have you reframed that a little bit in this process? 
Uh, yeah, so I think it's really interesting because values is something that I don't think any of us really know. It's very, it's a very subconscious concept, and yet it, our values are what drives us. They're, they're what mm. you know, what makes us feel happy or complete or fulfilled or what have you. And yet, most of us are not aware of what our values are. So that was one of the great things I did was actually working out what my values are. So, in terms of achievement, absolutely, achievement, ambition, they're still very important mm. to me in terms of my values. But actually, the way I've where I, where I've defined achievement is different from how mm. I used to define it. So where achievement may well have been about you know level in the organisation or getting to a director level title, now it's more about what's the impact I'm having on other people, mm-hmm. for example. Um, and so it's I think your value set is intrinsic to you. It might tweak slightly over time, but the lens within which you mm. look at it can actually evolve quite significantly. And I think that's what's a really interesting dynamic. Mm. You know, one thing that's really important to me is community. Mm-hmm. So having that sense of team, well, ironically, and I work on my own, mm. but actually I'm working with people who are very like-minded individuals. I'm opening up my network to people who are very much more like me and finding my sort of people, mm. if that makes sense. You know, people who are in this learning and development space, these people who are very emotionally aware, people who are very supportive and, and naturally inquisitive as well. That's what coaches are um, sort of naturally and, and intrinsically. And so my community, where it used to be about my team and supporting mm. my team to be the best version of themselves, I'm now actually on my own, but my sense of community is coming in a different way. Mm. So I think it's really interesting. My value is still community, but actually the lens mm-hmm. within which I look at it is different. Yeah, and it's a more creative way, I guess, of achieving it. And as you said, I love the, the concept of the lens because you're looking at it through, yeah. in, a, in a different way. And that's that's really powerful. Again, quite subtle, but can really shift things. And the way that you yeah. can achieve it is still possible, but in a different way that you were doing before. And you Absolutely. also talked about this the, the career ladder and of course it's that metaphor we always use and it's very clear sort of the next rung is oh of course after that I'm going to be manager and then there's that step yeah. and then your boss says this is what you do and so on how are you and my second pillar is is building the confidence and resilience to deal with mm-hmm. the inevitable ups and downs so how are you finding that of course you're relatively new and fresh as we said at the beginning of the journey but yeah. how are you finding that it's it's exhilarating but it can also be scary so how are you navigating those ups yeah and downs I, think, I think that is a really it's a really important point it is exhilarating mm. and generally 80 percent of the time if people say to me how are you getting on I'm like oh my god I'm loving it it's amazing mm. there is 20 percent of me mm. some days even more where it's like oh god hold on tight let's hope let's hope this is going to be okay um so in terms of building my confidence the biggest thing that I have realized is because community is such an important value of mine having those support networks around me is really important so from a professional point of view Mm. I've got my cheerleaders you know my family my friends all really encouraging me willing me forwards you know sharing my posts on LinkedIn and Instagram really you know applauding those those moments where I'm like I need to celebrate this because I've just landed x client or I've just you know completed my qualification or I've now got my accreditation Mm. with the EMCC what of those moments are where it's like oh let's have a little glass of fizz to celebrate I've got those sort of personal kind of reinforcement or support network but critically what I've realized is that the benefit of having a kind of professional support network is really important so I'm a member of a business lounge where there's loads of like-minded individuals we set our intentions for the week mm-hmm. we then sort of cheer each other on we, you know we encourage each other and we also push each other so it's like have you thought about this have you um have you had the opportunity to consider x or have no is such and such about what you've sent out or whatever it might be something I think when you're working for yourself you, it's important to have that community of people mm. around you to build you that confidence give you that encouragement that you need but also to encourage you to to go further to check keep challenging you to hold that mirror up sometimes mm. I think that's really really important I think the second thing from a confidence point of view and I'm really bad at this is actually acknowledging how far you've come mm. So I have a massive hurry up driver. I'm I'm always on to the next. I'm always thinking about what's coming next. I've got all these ideas. I've got a massive whiteboard on my office wall, thinking about all these different things that could potentially, um, you know, build my business over time. But I do have to make sure that I stop every now and then and do a little reflect, you know, I'm really proud of how that went or look at that client that I've landed or look how far that, you know, look how far that client's come from X to Y or look at that amazing feedback I've had. Those moments where historically I probably would have just sort of moved forward and forgotten about it. I'm actually really trying to 
take my own advice, to be honest, and take a moment to stop and reflect. Um, and one of the ways I do do that is I have a monthly meeting with my dad, who's my company secretary, who keeps me, all my admins sorted. And I actually agenda, you know, okay, what's gone well this month? What have mm. I done? I'm really pleased with, because otherwise I wouldn't do it because I'd always be looking, looking further forwards. So um, yeah, acknowledging results for me has definitely been something that I've been working on, but it's really important to actually you know, close the loop on some of this stuff. Otherwise you constantly feel like you're moving forwards. Yeah. And I think that's a struggle. I see it again and again in clients and I tell my clients to celebrate and yet I'm so bad at it myself. And that's it. Yeah. It's seeing how, I mean, if you really looked at where you were a year ago and for me, you know, I'd never even heard of podcasts and Zoom probably, you know, seven, yeah. eight years ago, it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah. and websites and all these things. So if you can just look back and see how yeah. far you've come and, and like that Instagram yeah. meme is, you know, if the, the you from a year ago would be so impressed with with where you are right Absolutely. now right so that's yeah. so important and having as you said the support network so key cheerleaders accountability challenging all those different Absolutely. types of support so so important so that's really valuable and so great that you have those in place yeah totally utterly, totally utterly. and and you mentioned a little bit about your choosing your business model which is the third pillar really getting that in place. And, and I think you said before we got on um, recording, you talked about a three-legged stool. So I love this idea. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about how you're putting that in place and how you're thinking about a viable business model that's really going to give you the, the long-term yeah. sustainable business? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I had a really great conversation with a mentor of mine probably two or three years ago. You know, when I started having the niggle, is, mm-hmm. is how I describe it, that kind of what's next you know I've kind of always toyed around the edges of what is my future going to look like if it's not in this corporate model um everything from wedding planning to god knows what I literally have looked at it all but I had a conversation and um he said to me and it's probably the single biggest like most impactful piece of advice I had in the practicalities if you like of setting up a business from being in the corporate world he said to me think about your business like a three-legged stool Think about having different elements of your business when we're creating like a portfolio business mm. so that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket effectively. So I have, I've probably got a two-legged stool, maybe a two and a half-legged stool at the moment. Um, you know, my one-to-one executive coaching, most of which is B2C, business to consumer. So me working with individual clients who approach me via LinkedIn mm. or, or my website, for example. I also have some element of um, coaching where I work with organizations who, you know, invest in coaching on behalf of their their individuals so still in the coaching space but more of a b2b type model and then as i mentioned i've got this third leg of my my stool if you like which is the um training and facilitation in the world of sales negotiation which is absolutely amazing it's associate work on behalf of an organization still in the realm of coaching still in the realm of helping people to unlock their potential which is absolutely my mission and purpose but a slightly different lens on it really using that sort of wheelhouse of my experience there's 15 years in that commercial corporate world that um you know where I've learned loads had loads of experience probably you know I can't imagine the number of conversations I've had with customers so actually bringing that to life and helping other people mm. to accelerate their career in that space as well and what I want to do with these three legs of this stool, these two and a half legs of this stool, is work out which are the bits that are actually going to accelerate further. So, you know, it's by no means a sort of 50-50 split. Am I comfortable with that split? You know, after year one, what is the appropriate split that I want it to be? Mm-hmm. And the way, the lens that I look at that through is not necessarily just the revenue lens, but it's also going mm-hmm. to be the passion lens you know the reason I've set up on my own as a self-employed person is because I want to be doing something that's in line with my mission my purpose my passions and so it's really important to me that I love what I do and that I you know I get that buzz and that I've got my mojo and I'm really enjoying and and getting the sense of satisfaction that I want from that Mm -hmm. so it's very much a starting point. I'm only a few months into this um this kind of journey of mine with my pivotal moments business. But this idea of three-legged stool is really something that I'm holding on to because it's giving me the opportunity to have that portfolio approach, but at the same time to uh, to give me the opportunity to work out actually where do I want to accelerate, which are the bits that, um, that I want to really push forward on. So. I love that. It's such a sound approach. I mean, I'm such a fan of the portfolio career idea anyway. I think it really ticks a lot of boxes, as it were, for so many of us who have so many interests and we want to do a lot of things. Yeah. And as you said, it's such a shame to turn our backs on 
a successful career because I like you I, I didn't hate my job I certainly you know I went through a bit of a rebellious phase when I was a bit like oh corporate and so on but actually I loved just like you I loved what I'd learned incredible opportunities yeah. people and so on and it's so so powerful to take that with you even if it's just a temporary transition and maybe in the future you move away from that. But the fact that you have that as a pretty sort of low hanging fruit, as we'd call yeah. it back in the corporate days, but then also yeah. you're adding new streams yeah. of the one-to-one coaching, maybe a combination with the coaching with the corporates and so on. And that's, that's such a powerful combination. And ironically, it's more diversified and secure than that one single salary that we always used to cling on to thinking that we have this one stable yeah, job that's going absolutely. to give us the safe pension yeah. and so on. So it's and quite that has been a real, that has been a real mindset shift mm. is this idea of, you know, going in and having the, the sort of scope of the career and, you know, having the pay pack at the end of the month and so on. It's very much a sort of, as you say, it's one, one box of sort of approach. Actually, this idea of having a portfolio of different things going on, it really opens up your mind to this possibility mm. of sort of freedom. You know, it's, it's so much more, the opportunities are so much broader, I think. Yeah. And whilst that is really exciting in the main, it can kind of give you a few wobbles, but it does give you that opportunity to, to make those choices, which is brilliant. You know, mm. my, my three-legged stool will probably evolve over the next 18 months. You know, it, well, it will, it won't, not probably, it will evolve depending on what happens. Probably extra legs will come onto the stool. Yeah. Maybe other parts of it will change. And, um, and actually what's amazing about that is that I can choose to do that. That's totally mm. and my gift to make those decisions. That's it. That's what, again, it's kind of scary, but it's also so exciting. Before, yes, it was quite nice to have a salary regardless of how much effort you put in. And let's be honest, as high achievers, we put in a lot of effort and there's then a ceiling of how much we can earn, actually. Yeah. Whereas now, if you want to do an extra workshop, you want to contact an extra 10 companies, you want to take on three more clients, that's yeah. completely open to you. Right? Likewise, of course, you can take a step back as well. So you mentioned that people are approaching yeah. on LinkedIn, for example. So how have you been building? That's the fourth pillar. How have you been building your personal brand? Some of it sounds like, obviously, you're leveraging existing and past experience and network but how are you finding sort of shifting in this new direction and adding yeah. the new legs of the stool to your brand yeah <laughs> so I think the, the, when you when I think about the idea of creating a personal brand as a salesperson historically that doesn't sit comfortably with me mm. it almost it almost doesn't feel like I have been doing that but then I have been reflecting and listening back to your previous podcast about what you mean by the concept of personal mm. brand and I think the first thing that I've realized I've done, albeit maybe subconsciously rather than overtly, is really tapping into my purpose. Mm-hmm. So one of the biggest things I wanted to um, get to grips with, so authenticity is another one of my values. Mm-hmm. So being true to me and, and operating in an authentic, open, transparent way is really important to me. Um, and linked with that then, getting really clear on my why. So massive fan of Simon Sinek, anyone who's not read it, listen to it, the brilliant podcast um, on, on sort of getting to your why. My big thing for me is I want to help people to um, get unstuck. So help them to lead fulfilling lives on their terms. And that could be anything from, you know, one-to-one executive coaching where they've lost their confidence, or it could be supporting some national account managers who are wanting to, you know, accelerate their sales career. You know, underneath that banner, that umbrella, if you like, of helping people to maximise their potential, finding fulfilment on their terms, there are so many different levers that I could potentially pull. And so I constantly check myself, is everything Mm. I'm doing in service of that overarching purpose, if you like, of helping people to realise their potential and find fulfilment on their terms? That's absolutely what I want to be known for and everything I want to do, I want to be in service of that particular Mm. purpose, if you like. So that's, I think that's the first thing is is being really true to that. Um, I think the second thing that's really important to me is that every interaction that people have with me, I want them to feel me. So, you know, I want them to experience Joe Jackson in reality. You know, I don't want to feel as though I'm, putting on a facade I don't want to as I'm operating in a way that I should be doing you know I think I think sometimes in big organizations you can kind of lose that sense of individuality sometimes I think you can kind of maybe feel like you're being molded into a certain approach or maybe you have to check what you say or maybe you have to approach things in a politically 
you know, sensitive way because so-and-so wants you to say such and such. And I think what's really important to me is that sense of authenticity. And, you know, that therefore I really hope that my clients and people who I work with have that sense of the real the real me, the real experience of me as a person. You know, what's and all, I'll be I'm really open about what's going on in my personal life. I'll be really open about the trials and tribulations, but, you know, the good stuff as well. And I think that's what's really important is that, this isn't a shiny, perfect persona of Joe Jackson. This is the real Joe Jackson. And I hope that that helps me make me more relatable because I think that's when you can get a great connection with somebody, which then means you can help them to realise their potential, to unlock whatever it is that they need to build that life that's fulfilling on their terms. I love it. And that's exactly it. And thank you so much for listening and to, to get an understanding of how I see the personal brand because it is it can feel quite icky. And it's funny that you come from a sales background and yet still founded a bit of a foreign concept but that's exactly it. it's the big picture why of what you want to stand for but then also bringing that to life in the day-to-day in every conversation every interaction and I it sounds like you're allowing that to give you the breadth to experiment and so on but again it's a lens through which you're looking at projects and clients and so on to make sure it's all speaking to that so I hope people can see how powerful that is and also how flexible it is it kind of gives you a framework without being too beholden to like no this is what you have to do and so on Um, and so the final pillar is uh, designing effective work-life integration or flexible work-life integration so how are you finding that in terms of setting boundaries prioritizing your time and energy you said you're working of course a lot by yourself so how are you fulfilling that need for community and so and how are you integrating or not work and life yeah it's a really good question um so I think the first thing I'll say is that um one thing I have noticed is Again, going back to my values, the community is hugely important to me. I have noticed sitting in my third bedroom with a laptop and a you know a Zoom mm. call and all those sorts of things doesn't necessarily nourish me as much mm. as sitting in an office might or or going you know meeting clients face to face. So one of the things that I've really put in place is actually making sure that on those days where I'm not having one to one client conversations, mm. maybe when I'm doing work on the business rather than in the business, or maybe where I'm producing content or those sorts of things, I'm actually doing that in an environment where there's a bit of bustle around me so whether that's the health club whether that's the local library whether that's the local cafe whatever it might be I find that just by being around other people I get topped up from an energy point of view I'm very much an e um, an extrovert so um I have realized that I need to mix that up for me and you know you sort of I notice when my energy levels were waning and then I said right okay I need to get out I need to go and be in an environment where there's where there's energy around me so I can you know find my mojo back on that particular day so that's the first thing. I think the second thing in terms of boundaries, this is a really interesting one. So from a boundaries point of view, I've said to myself, first things first, I want Friday afternoons for me. So I don't want to have anything after one o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Um, it's really important to me because I want to know that I've got time to go and have my hair done or I've got time to go and meet the girls for an early doors, you know, for a drink or I can go and travel to wherever I'm going to for the weekend or whatever it might be. It's like, actually, this is my time for me. You know, it's protected me time, if you like. And I've really, I'm quite proud of myself. I've actually pretty much stuck to that, I'd say 98% of the time so far. So that's good. Um, And then the other thing I've also tried to do is I'm trying to protect my time in the morning. So I am not a natural gym bunny, but I know that exercise really helps me, but I have to get it done in the morning. So one of the other things I'm doing is I'm not having any uh, client facing time before half past nine in the morning mm. that means that I can get up at you know not at a horrible o'clock because I'm a massive sleepaholic as well it also means I can get to the gym get my stuff done get set up ready for the day and at half past nine I'm then in a really good mindset to be in my best self to be able to give that to my clients as mm. well and I think what I've learned from that is actually protecting that time for me is really important because that will give me the energy to be the best one-to-one coach I can be, to be the best, you know, trainer or facilitator as well. And I think it really helps if I'm charged up properly mm. that I can then support people as, as I want to. But then I suppose as well from an energy point of view, I've also noticed that sometimes I'm really in the mood to get into the zone, write a blog article. And it might be Sunday morning and I might be sat on the sofa with my feet up. But actually, if I've got an hour to do that, why not? So I kind of go a little bit where the energy takes me as well, which when I think about flexibility and freedom, that is so cool. It's so liberating. And the thing is, because I love what I do, 
it doesn't feel like work. It's like, oh, I want to write about such and yeah. such. Great. I'm in the mood for that. Let's get in the zone, you know, get the AirPods in, get the tunes going, whatever it might be, and get on with it. But that means that on Wednesday afternoon, if I'm really struggling, let's go meet Sensei for a walk or let's go and do whatever. And, it, it, and really acknowledging where my energy is mm. has helped me to sort of intertwine this work life integration, if you like. Yeah. Um, I'm not suggesting I've got it all nailed. I really haven't. But I definitely feel as though putting those few little bits in has helped me with the flexibility. When I was in the world of corporate, I felt very tethered to my laptop. Mm. And that's not the case anymore. You know, I, I know where I'm at with everything. I know that I'm on top of everything. I know that probably I'm pushing myself to go even faster and harder. But actually, I'm not accountable to anyone else mm. apart from me and my clients. And so I can do my work on a Sunday morning or I can finish at lunchtime on a Wednesday if I'm struggling with my mojo. And that's OK, because I know that I trust myself to get it done because it's all in service of my passion, my purpose oh. and helping other people. So, you know, I don't think any of us have it nailed however long we've been in business or, or how we're yeah. starting. But but it sounds like you're making a lot of very good choices there. I mean, the fact that you're setting up already, I like to think of a loose structure, right? And it's through that structure yeah. that you get the freedom. And then having the flexibility, as you say, to actually go where your energy is, is really important. I think we can go too far and I have gone too far either way. If you go completely, oh, I just want to go with the flow, fine. Yeah. But probably that'll end up with you're not achieving the goals and you're not making the impact Absolutely. you want to make and so on. But then if you're too rigid, then what's the point of having left the nine to five? Because you haven't, you're just recreating that same cage yeah. or whatever you want to call it. So I think the combination, yeah. as you say, of blocking certain times but Friday afternoon is really nice. And I think officers should do that, in fact, anyway. Um, mm. You know, knowing yourself, your own energy. I actually block the morning entirely up until I think it's one o'clock. I don't do any client calls because I want to then be able to work on my book and create content and whatever else. Yeah. I also exercise first thing in the morning, but others I'm sure do it at lunch or in the evening or whatever, <laughs> right? So really yeah. knowing your your sleep needs and your energies, yeah, your priorities, yeah. your life situation. And again, that has evolved. For me, you know, before I met my partner, I was working all over the place literally physically and also in terms mm. of time then he had more of a nine to five so then I fell into Monday to Friday then he left his job and then it's more flexible again then we've got the kids who are only in you know nursery a couple of days a week and so on so it really does evolve so as you say it will be a journey but it sounds like again from my expert opinion that you've really put in place <laughs> some really good you know um what do they call those sort of guide rails almost yeah guard, yeah, guard guard rails, guard rails. yeah exactly yeah. so again yeah. flexibility but but helping you to make the right choices yeah. as it were and, and not it, to and feel not, guilt as well is so important isn't it exactly it's not feeling guilty but also I suppose it's it's as you say it's guardrails it's not necessarily mm. a structure but it's yeah. if, so, if something comes in in terms of an opportunity mm. and it means starting at 8am okay cool I need to make yes. an active choice then am I willing to do that probably yes but it's not, it's not all the time. It's not being done to mm. me. I'm, I'm, I yeah. have the opportunity to choose that rather than feeling like I have to, or I should. Yeah. So um, I think it just, it just holds that sort of space in my mind to be able to make those choices that work for me, because at the end of the day, that's what I'm doing this for mm. is to have the, the life, the, the balance, the, the, you know, the fulfillment that I'm looking for. And it is, as you say, creating that space because it's so easy to go, oh my gosh, yes, I should and I have to and I and I want to and then also going, hang on a second and then making an empowered, informed decision that yes, actually the money yeah. is worth it or the impact I'll make or the client yeah, or whatever absolutely. it is. Or as yeah. you say, Sunday, I feel so inspired. I'd love to I'd love to lie by the pool and like write this blog post because I feel so inspired yeah. and that's, that doesn't feel like a drain to me because I actually love what I'm exactly. doing. So, so again, that's yeah, very familiar to me and I'm sure to people yeah. listening as well. And um, so with that in mind, where can we read more about Pivotal Moments and, and follow follow what you're up to, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. So um, pivotalmoments.co.uk is my website with everything on there from the one-to-one coaching piece, the capability development. Also, one of my blog posts is a bit more about my story. So mm-hmm. if anyone wants to have a little nosy at that, then uh, please do take the opportunity to do that and sign up to the community as well. So every week I release a, a newsletter or a blog post or something, events and so on and so forth. So it'd be great to uh, yeah for people to join me in that space. Definitely. Amazing. Thank you. I will definitely link to that, um, your blog post with the story I was I was reading, as I said, just before 
we spoke and it so resonates with my own experience. It's so I'm sure, mm. and I know in fact, very um, much mirroring so many of my clients' experiences as well. And very much what we've talked about today, you even use the words of redefining success and so on. So it's, I'm so yeah. glad to have met you and, and want to thank you so much for giving your precious time and energy to us today to share your experience so far. And of course, I'd love to follow along and see how your journey progresses. So maybe we can reconnect in a while and see how you're getting Absolutely. on as well. See what's changed. No, it's yeah, been absolutely see the next pivotal yeah. moment. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm sure there will be many absolutely. as there are for all of us. Yeah. And in fact, I think we said that and you said that, I should say, before we came on as well. But Joe was talking about the those different pivotal moments that come in life. And it's not just the one. I see some people talk about sort of the second, is it the second stage of career or whatever, we talk about midlife mm. crisis. But actually, it can be... Uh, you know, it can be a personal thing like a divorce or something that triggers it. It can be having children. It can be a personal illness, it, but it could be many or several yeah. things along the way. And as we've been saying, it can be terrifying at first, but it can also be so exciting and empowering. We get to rebuild, reinvent, yeah. create something new and perhaps even better and certainly different to what we had before. So yes, here's to those Completely. future pivotal moments as well. As Absolutely. you said, I'm sure there'll be more for, for all of us. So Absolutely. thank you so much again, Joe. Thanks for coming it's been on. It's an absolute pleasure, Anna. Thank you. Soon. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you. If you'd like to create your own transition story and escape the nine to five to work for yourself, then come and join us over in the Business Incubator. This is a comprehensive online program and community designed to give you the roadmap that you need to help you figure out what you really want to do, come up with a workable plan and take the right steps to achieve it. Read more and join us over on onestepoutside.com forward slash nine to five. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash nine to five.